to another painting tutorial. Um, what I'll try to do, I'll get a few of these done, and if I don't have a battle report, I'll stick one of these up instead, so uh, there's always something uh, coming your way. Uh, so today, we'll be doing um, some British Desert Infantry, um, since Midwar um, has a little bit of a re-release again. If you can find them, then follow this guide, and it's actually pretty quick and simple to get them done. Uh, it just takes time because you'll have so many of the paint in one go. Um, so luckily I've managed to find a, uh, a British guy in my uh, leftovers box. And I thought I'd paint him up and uh, show you guys how easy it can be done. So um, let's get stuck in. Okay, so this is enough talk. We have the model. I've base coated it. Um, I've base coated it um, desert yellow. It doesn't really matter on the base coat because the whole model is going to be covered. Um, so... Um, it depends on your preference. Some people like a nice light base coat or a dark base coat, but it shouldn't really matter. So what we're going to do, I was like starting off with um, the largest area of the model. So it's going to be the uniform. Uh, so that is the shorts and the shirt. And we're going to be using a Vallejo colour and it is this one. Uh, Iraqi sand, I suppose you could call it Iraqi sand. Uh, and uh, we'll cover that and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so it's literally just gone on, uh, so it's a little bit uh, wet, so you can see a little bit of a sheen. Uh, if uh, you're painting an officer and they have a cap or a hat, uh, I do the hat that colour as well. Um, so while that is drying, we can do the helmet, or I suppose you could call it the brody. Um, so we're going to use uh, dark sand for that. And I always like in my painting, when areas are drying, uh, I will paint an area that's completely separate. So that can dry and then we can go back. And when you um, paint the uniform, don't worry about um, going over onto other areas because at this point uh, we'll be going back over them anyway. So we'll do the helmet and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so that is the helmet done. Uh, make sure you're trying to go at the underneath. Uh, we will be doing the skin later, so don't worry about going on the, the face or hair. Um, if it does uh, end up being a little bit streaky, uh, you could always leave it like that and just say the helmet's been uh, slightly weathered uh, through um, the arduous desert conditions. So, as I normally like to do, while this is drying, we can do the boots. Uh, the boots are black, and I do love a contrast paint, so we'll be using a uh, black Templar. So, they do have um, socks on these guys, so just do the boot, and then we'll do the socks later. So, we'll see how that looks. Okay, so that is the boots done. Very quick with the contrast paint. You can always give it a second coat, um, but just let it settle down first, because as you know with contrast paints, if you use them before, it kind of does an automatic shading and highlighting for you. So the uniform is still wet, the helmet's still wet, the boots are still wet. So what we're going to do is the canteen on the back, because uh, this at the moment hasn't got any wet paint near it. So um, basically there's webbing all around it, so we'll be doing that later, so don't worry about going over there. Um, so we're going to be doing the canteen uh, flat earth, another Vallejo paint. So we'll see how that looks when we're done. Okay, so that is done. Uh, as you can see, I've gone over the webbing a bit, but it doesn't matter. We'll go and uh, go back over that later. You could, if you wanted to, use flat earth for the rifle as well. Uh, but I will be using, and I'll be doing that step next when everything dries, I will be using uh, Contrast Wildwood because I do quite like the effect this has uh, when you do rifles or um, tool handles because um, I just like using contrast paints and I quite like them on uh, rifles because it really gets into the recesses so you can make out the metal parts for later. So we'll do that, we'll see how it looks and then we'll continue on our little journey for this little guy. Okay, so that is the rifle done with contrast wildwood. So wait for that to dry. Uh, so while we wait, we're going to be doing the socks on the model and we're going to be using another Vallejo colour and it's going to be khaki. So at this stage in the painting now you need to start being careful of not going over the other areas. So with the rifle it was uh, basically the uniform and uh, with this now you don't want to be going over the boots but it's a contrast paint so it won't take too long to uh, rectify any spillages. Okay, so that's the socks done. It's actually a bit difficult to tell because of the base coat of the um, desert yellow. 
but when we see when we start doing the skin uh, it should uh, stand out against the black and the skin so we need to wait for the rifle to dry and we'll be going over the metal areas with uh, gun metal uh, army painter uh, I like this one because it's it's quite thin uh, paint but it's got this nice dark metal colour I suppose lead belcher would uh, also be useful uh, and also uh, if sometimes you can make it out there's a little cap on the canteen on the top of it um, so if you can make that out put a little uh, blob of it there and maybe if there's any grenades you can do the pins um, on and the handle on it as well okay so that is the rifle done uh, basically I find the best thing to do is um, trying to find a picture of the rifle and then you can find out which areas are meant to be metal luckily with Flames of War the artwork on the front covers of most of the books have um, the rifles or MG's uh, and I find that a good guide um, and that's why I like to use the contrast paint on the rifle because it shows all the recesses um, quite clearly so that is done we're now going to move on to the skin and I'd say be careful because uh, we've painted the bulk of the model now and we don't want to have to go back and cover up any areas but if you do it's not too much hassle to uh, go over and to do the skin first of all we are going to be using Citadel colour uh, base Corax white uh, as any white will do uh, but this is a nice thick um, one and usually one coat is about enough for this one okay so that is all the skin areas done Corax white so while we wait for that to dry we're going to be doing all the webbing <clears throat> uh, the backpack, uh, the belt on the rifle, we're going to be doing it Vallejo stone grey okay so that is done um, it is uh, still uh, wet so it's actually quite difficult to see or you can see it much better there especially against uh, the brown of the canteen so make sure you get the backpack try to see if you can find any straps going across the shoulder and of course the uh, belt for the rifle so while that is drying we can go over all the skin areas with contrast Gilliman flesh okay as with the step before the um, contrast paint is still drying um, but I find contrast paint just such an easy way to do skin I've always struggled to do uh, skin tones and models it just takes layer after layer after layer, layer. But with this just white and then contrast and um, it gives quite a good tanned effect and goes in all the nooks and crannies as well of the face and um, there you go so when it dries it will look a lot better uh, and it's also done nice and quickly so we're then going to wash the entire model and the skin once it's dry with Anthonian um, shade. you could use um, a brown ink if you wanted but this is more of a green one um, I find it goes better with the uniform um, giving it more of a khaki finish and going over the skin will just make the skin look a little bit dirtier these guys maybe coming off the backs of trucks being in combat for uh, a little bit of a uh, no chance to wash so give them a bit of more uh, weather beaten finish so we'll apply that let it dry and we'll have a little look so there we go that is the uh, ink dried and it's nice and finished so it's uh, actually quite a decent finish in the end uh, but that's usually what shades do um, so there you go it was actually quite quick I was only painting the one model so um, it, it uh, adds up when you have another three on the base and then you paint in about five extra bases or how many you guys do in one go but there it is um, so I'll try to get these videos uploaded if I haven't got a battle report and I have three more so I have late British Soviets, Americans and when the bulge comes out I will have some German infantry left over hopefully so until then uh, everyone stay safe